This video will cover the topic, Variable Expressions as Inputs of Functions, Problem Type 2. Aren't the x values usually the inputs of a function? Right. We typically think of the x values as the inputs of a function and the y values as the outputs of a function. Let's take a look at an example problem for this topic and see how we may use variable expressions as inputs of functions. Let's say the function g is defined as g of x equals 4x squared plus 5x, and we want to find g of x minus 3. So would the expression x minus 3 be the input of the function? That's right. We can think of our function as g of the input equals 4 times the input squared plus 5 times the input. We're asked to find g of x minus 3, so our input is x minus 3. We first need to evaluate our exponential expression, so we'll square the quantity x minus 3. Next, we will use distribution to multiply 4 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 and 5 times x minus 3. We can now combine like terms. This final answer tells us that when our input is x minus 3, our output is 4x squared minus 19x plus 21. I think I understand, but can we work through another example? Of course. Let's say the function h is defined as h of x equals 5x squared minus 3x, and we want to find h of x minus 1. Okay, so we would substitute x minus 1 in for x in our function because x minus 1 is the input. Exactly. When we do this, we see that h of x minus 1 equals 5 times the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 3 times the quantity x minus 1. When we simplify the right side of our equation, we see that h of x minus 1 equals 5x squared minus 13x plus 8. This final answer tells us that when our input is x minus 1, our output is 5x squared minus 13x plus 8. Alright, so when solving problems like this, we will be given a defined function and asked to evaluate it for a certain variable expression. We can substitute this variable expression into our equation for x and simplify the equation as much as possible. That's exactly right. Great work! 